Furthermore, weapons, absolutely. Experimental weapons? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, they, they, they shoot the boss. We saw the boss as a, like a cloth, like a wet cloth. It seems like a Volkswagen. Big boss, like a Volkswagen. This testimony was reported to American filmmaker Patrick Dillon a few weeks after the battle for the Air Force. The person interviewed, Majid Al Ghazali, is a well known and respected man in Baghdad, who is the first violinist in the city orchestra. In addition to describing the battle, Majid Al Ghazali wanted to show Patrick Dillon the site near the airport where the mysterious weapon was used along with the traces of fused metal still visible and the irregularly sized ditches where the bodies were buried before they were exhumed. We sought out Majid al-Ghazali to hear more details of his story. We met up with him in Amman and he pointed out some inexplicable peculiarities on the bodies of the victims of the battle for the airport. Just the head uh, was burned and uh... Uh, other, the other parts of the, the bodies wasn't anything that happened on, on it. Al-Ghazali reported that he had seen three passengers in a car, all dead, with their faces and teeth burnt, the body intact, and no sign of projectiles. Uh, there wasn't any, any bullet. I saw they, they teeth, just they teeth, and um, no eyes, uh, all of them, with the body. Nothing for the bodies, just the teeth and, and uh, all the, uh, I mean, uh, the heads uh, were uh, burned. There were other inexplicable aspects. The terrain where the battle took place was dug up by the American military and replaced with other fresh earth. The bodies that were not hit by projectiles had shrunk to just slightly more than one meter in height. Uh, except that uh, the bodies is uh, sculled by the bu bullets. Most of them that uh, become very small. Uh, I mean, uh, it's like, like that, something like that. We asked Majid what weapon he imagined had been used. Uh, one year later, we, uh, we heard that um, uh, this is... Uh, uh, Update technology, they used uh, the, a unique one, um, it's like lasers. We found another disturbing document on the use of mysterious weapons in Iraq, which referred to episodes taking place almost at the same time as those described by Majid al-Ghazali. 26 in the past, about 20 of them some of them have no head, the head being cut. Some of them, the arms, the legs. The only one who didn't injure was the driver. And really, I don't know how he reached our hospital. Because one hand, one arm was in his lap. One head beside him. It was a very, very horrible, 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 horrible thing. In the roof of the car, there was... Part brain, of the body's brain. momentum, intestine, brains. Yes, all parts of the body. It was a miserable, very, 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 I very miserable. Them Do you have idea with what kind of weapons they attacked that bus? This the bus, we didn't know what kind of uh, weapon would be uh, hit. Really, what we saw, cut arms, cut legs, cut head, abdomen, open abdomen, visceral outside. It seems to be a new, a new weapon. It seems, it seems a new weapon. They try to, 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 to do, do experiments in our, our civilian. We don't know what was... Uh, Nobody uh, can identify what the type of this one. We went to Belgium to find the filmmaker of the sequence, Geert van Morter, a doctor working as a volunteer in Iraq. Here in this footage is taken in the hospital, the general teaching hospital in Hilla, which is about 100 kilometers from Baghdad and close to the historical site of uh, uh, Babylon. Here we had a talk with the colleague Dr. Sad Falugi, which is the chief surgeon in that hospital. 
Dr. Alpaluji said me that from the survivors that he operated, that they said they did not hear any noise. So there was no explosion to hear, no metal fragments or shrapnels of bullets in the bodies. So they themselves were thinking of some strange kinds of weapon which they did not know. Let's hear Dr. Sahad el story about this more in detail. In this pass, it was very crowded. They went to, from uh, Hilla to Kifil to see their families. But before they leave the checkpoint of American checkpoint, they returned back. They said to them, please return the, the, the uh, villagers. They said to them, return back, return back. When he tried to return back, they shoot him from, from uh, the checkpoint. No gunshot wounds. No, no. It, it, I think, I don't know what it was, really. We couldn't, we are here, ten uh, surgeons. We couldn't decide what was the weapon which been uh, hit this car. But inside the bodies, you did not discover ordinary bullets. All of them being, all, we didn't find bullets. No. We didn't find bullets. But most of the uh, passenger people been dead, so they took them immediately to the uh, refrigerator. We couldn't set them to see, but those, those who are alive, we couldn't find any kind of uh, shells. We didn't find shells in the inside that way. Something cutting organs, cutting limbs, attacking the neck, attacking the abdomen, and goes out. Dr. Faluji also ended up speaking about a laser weapon. But I don't think the bombing and the cluster bombs and the, the, the uh, laser weapons could uh, bring democracy to our country. As in any war, the war in Iraq left us a dreadful gallery of horror. Images of mutilations that not even doctors can explain. The witnesses refer to laser weapons, arms with mysterious effects. We do not know what kind of weapons could produce such terrible effects. We tried to learn more about it by asking for interviews to members of companies manufacturing laser and microwave weapons. Yet, the U.S. Defense Department prevented any information from being released to us. They also did not answer, up to the time the film was edited, the questions we had sent them in order to know whether or not experimental weapons had been tested in Iraq and Afghanistan. We tracked down the Pentagon press conferences from before the beginning of the Second Gulf War to see if they spoke about any new weapons being tested. The words of the Secretary of Defense and General Mayers indicate a willingness to try weapons that had never been used before. And the questions from the press about direct energy and microwave weapons made them visibly uncomfortable. Mr. Secretary, can, can I ask you a question about some of the technology that you're developing to fight the war on terror, specifically directed energy and high-powered microwave technology? Do you, uh, when do you envision that you can weaponize that type of technology? Mm -hmm. Goodness. Um, it, is, it is in, for the most part, the kinds of things you're talking about.